We are in the Rocky Mountains of northwestern Montana in the dead of winter, where BNSF trains follow the frozen route of the Great Northern over Mariah's Pass. Part one of this two-part series covers the western half of the line between Whitefish and Essex. Our winter journey begins in the early hours of the morning at 500 Depot Street in Whitefish, Montana. Great Northern's classic Whitefish Depot is aglow in the pre-dawn dark. Dating back to 1928, it resembles many of the alpine-style buildings constructed by the railroad around Glacier National Park. The depot serves Amtrak's Empire Builder and has the distinction of being the busiest stop between the West Coast and St. Paul, Minnesota. GN181, an EMD NW3 built in 1942, sits on static display at the west end of the depot. The 1,000 horsepower road switcher is one of only seven built for Great Northern and today is the sole surviving example of an NW3. Number 181 may be cold and quiet now, but there is still plenty of activity on the former GN. Whitefish is a division point on the BNSF with the Kootenai River subdivision heading 250 miles west to Spokane, while the High Line sub runs 250 miles east to Pacific Junction near Haver, Montana. BNSF 8513 East leads a 107-car manifest into Whitefish for a crew change before tackling the snowy climb over Mariah's Pass. The train will be stopping at the east end of the yard. The morning dawns gray and cold with the promise of snow in the Rockies. BNSF 8248 leads an eastbound Z train out of Whitefish. There has been an avalanche on the mountain, and trains are stacking up on both sides of the pass this morning. BNSF's Glacier Dispatcher threads the Z around several lower priority trains, but it will also have to wait until the pass is again open. Continuing east to Columbia Falls, the double track main line passes the former Plum Creek and Weyerhaeuser Sawmill. It was closed in 2016, repurposed and reopened in 2020 by Smart Lamb North America, and is now a high tech facility producing cross laminated timber or CLT panels for construction. With a new crew, BNSF 8513 heads east through the scene. This mixed manifest train originated in Pasco, Washington and is bound for points east, such as Northtown Yard in Minneapolis, Minnesota, or perhaps Galesburg, Illinois. The 
dragging equipment detector in the foreground gives the train crew a good report. BNSF detector, mile post 1212.9. Main 2, no defects. Repeat, no defects. Total axle 464. Temperature 27 degrees out. The High Line subdivision meets the Flathead River at Con Kelly, milepost 1208.7. Here, the line goes to single track until reaching Corum. BNSF 8218 East is seen again as it clings to a narrow shelf above the frigid water. This narrow pass is known as Bad Rock Canyon. The river cuts its course between Tea Kettle Mountain and Columbia Mountain, with the railroad on its north side and Highway 2 on its south. A dusting of snow highlights the rough features of Bad Rock Canyon as a westbound grain train heads for Whitefish. The High Line subdivision crosses the Flathead River at Corum. This girder deck bridge replaces an older Baltimore deck truss built by GN in 1900. Pictured here, it had two spans, each 230 feet in length, and was reinforced to accommodate heavier trains in the 1920s and replaced by the current bridge during the BN years. With the snow-capped mountains of Glacier National Park for a backdrop, BNSF 7739 leads a westbound grain shuttle over the Flathead River at Corum.
Belton marks the west entrance to Glacier National Park. The famous Going to the Sun Road passes underneath the main line. Although most of the road is closed for the season, you can still get a winter view of McDonald Lake, the largest in the park. The snows of early March may be hiding the mountains, but the view is still worth a short detour. Belton is a small community in hibernation. At least that's how it looks from Highway 2. West Glacier Station was built in 1910 and enlarged in 1935. It was donated to the Glacier Natural History Association in 1991 and now is home to the Glacier National Park Conservancy. Amtrak's Empire Builder does make an occasional station stop here and riders have access to the platform behind the building. The station retains the historical name of Belton, as does the railroad. An eastbound empty crude oil train takes the 10,232-foot siding in a meet with a westbound. BNSF 8089 West leads a loaded crude oil train out of North Dakota through Belton. Crude oil trains make a daily appearance on the High Line subdivision. During our visit in February and March of 2021, we usually encountered two in each direction each day. CSX AC44CW number 568 makes a nice departure from the all BNSF power lineup we have seen so far. As the train departs Belton, it enters a narrow canyon along the middle fork of the Flathead River. Turning to and fro, it carves its way through the Flathead Range, artfully scoring the southern boundary of Glacier National Park. At the same time, the river guides the railroad on a gentle course toward Mariah's Pass. Mm -hmm. 
BNSF 6805 leads a train of international stacks toward Tunnel 4 at milepost 1194.5. BNSF 4400 West leads another crude oil train out of Tunnel 3.8 at milepost 1192.5. The tunnel is 2,281 feet in length and straightens out a sharp bend in the river. Exiting the canyon, the railroad takes a more southeasterly course through Nyack, milepost 1188. Another section of double track begins, extending over 11 miles to Payola. BNSF 3792 takes an empty grain shuttle east. Though only skirting the southern edge of Glacier National Park, trackside views are not lacking in scenic beauty. It was the empire builder himself, James J. Hill, who saw the value of its natural beauty and resolved that it should be preserved. Signed into law in 1910 by President William Howard Taft, Glacier officially became a national park. Today, it remains as another legacy of the Great Northern Railroad.
This westbound running 2x2 two two rolls along Highway 2 near Stanton Creek. You won't find the name Stanton Creek on any timetable, but there is a private crossing between Red Eagle and Paola near mile post 1179 where crew swaps occasionally take place. In a lull between winter snowstorms, a spreader set out of Essex has been dispatched to clear snow from between the rails. Today's work train is plowing between Bison and Nyack. The lead machine is a Harsco Spreader Ditcher, a modern version of the classic Jordan Spreader design. This unit was built in 2012. An older, more traditional style Jordan Spreader is in the trailing position. At Paola, milepost 1177.6, the line goes back to single track. During the winter months, propane-fired switch heaters are employed to keep the switch points and movable frogs, if present, free from ice and snow. It sure beats doing the job by hand, although sometimes that is still necessary. Being in the proximity of a switch heater can impede your ability to hear approaching trains, BNSF 5721 West alerts us to its presence as it blows for a little used crossing with over 100 loads of North Dakota crude. A light snow falls as the train continues west through Paola, but at the top of the pass, it is a different story. The BNSF Glacier Dispatcher has reported heavy blowing snow over the summit and wind gusts in excess of 75 miles per hour, what we call winter on Marias Pass.
six engines are on the point of an empty grain shuttle. The latter three are offline and on their way east to balance out the power needs of the railroad. They pass the detector at milepost 1175.1. NSF 6017 is a heritage locomotive marking the railroad's 25th anniversary in 2020. We will see more of it later. The train gets a good report from the nearby detector. BNSF detector, milepost 1175.1. No defects. Repeat, no defects. Total axle 496 out. The line goes back to double track at Pinnacle, and in another three miles, trains roll over the crossovers at Essex. Milepost 1170.2. The red over flashing red on main one is for the approaching spreader set, which is now returning from Nyack. The signal tells the work train they are lined into the house track at Essex, an important maintenance of way base on the mountain. From the other side of the crossovers, the spreaders enter the house track at what crews refer to as the penalty box. Helpers are also staged here for assisting heavy trains over Mariah's Pass. This Jordan spreader has no cab controls and relies on the engineer of BNSF 5289 to move. The work train's conductor aids the engineer over the radio or with hand signals. The next day, another work train waits to enter the penalty box, while an eastbound empty grain train passes on Main 2.
This time, BNSF 5289 and 4109 are in charge of a different type of snow removal equipment, what the railroad refers to as a snow dozer. A pair of dozers are coupled, one facing each direction in between two road engines. This way, the train can plow in each direction without having to be wide or turn around. The dozers can really throw the snow, and we'll get to see them working a little later on. The crown jewel of Essex is the classic Isaac Walton Inn. It was built in 1939 by the Great Northern to house railroad workers and visitors to Glacier National Park. The two and a half story inn measures 36 feet by 114 feet and at the time of its completion boasted 29 rooms in addition to 10 bathrooms, a spacious lobby, kitchen, dining room and general store. Plans were in the works to make Essex an official south entrance to the park with the building of a new entrance road, but those plans were permanently put on hold with the coming of World War II. Today, the Isaac Walton Inn is privately owned and available for visitors who want to come and unwind. In addition to the hotel, rooms are available for rent, including this classic EMD F45 diesel adorned in Great Northern sky blue paint scheme. There are also several cabooses nestled among the trees. Miles of hiking, or this time of year, cross-country skiing, attract many visitors. Of the Isaac Walton Inn's many selling points, you'll find listed no cell service, no TV, and no phones in the rooms. Here, you can literally unplug from the rest of the world. Well, you are not totally unplugged. For rail fans, the other selling point is that the Isaac Walton is located at the base of the steep climb to Mariah's Pass. The small yard at Essex is a busy maintenance of way base, which primarily consists of snow removal during the winter months. An old GN water tank has somehow survived from the days of steam. The walkway above the tracks gives rail fans a great view of the action in the yard and on the main line. BNSF 4647 East leads a snow-covered empty grain shuttle through Essex on Main 2. A crew prepares the rail grinder to be moved to a different part of the yard, and an eastbound auto rack train led by BNSF 7932 heads for the pass.
Essex is a truly magical setting on cold winter nights. The rail yard is a buzz of activity. The Isaac Walton Inn basks in the glow of the Laram Rail Grinder, which is slowly negotiating its way through the yard tracks. Crews are carefully clearing all switches of ice and snow, the old-fashioned way by hand, as the curious behemoth lights up the night. Work continues on the railroad through all hours of the night, while many residents of Essex are burrowed in for a cozy winter's eve. We will get some shut-eye as well, for tomorrow is going to be a long, cold, and busy day as we ascend to the Continental Divide at Mariah's Pass. You have been watching an excerpt from Winter on Mariah's Pass, available on DVD, HD Blu-ray, and 4K Digital with Vimeo On Demand. Visit 7ideaproductions.com to order. There is a link in the description below. If you like what you are seeing, be sure to like and subscribe to catch more videos like this added weekly. From all of us at 7idea Productions, thanks for watching.